I'm Tinny from Mini Bull Design, and today is, uh, as you can see, a good warm sunny day. We haven't had a good warm sunny day in quite a while. There's a light breeze, but uh, it's going to be a nice warm day. You can feel the sun actually when it hits you, it's warming you up. Uh, very welcome, re very refreshing day. Here's the rub I have conservatively. $3,000 worth of product that I have to make in a fairly short period of time in order to fill orders and keep the store stocked up. If you've been in the store, you can see that it's virtually sold out. Anything of any consequence is, is gone. So uh, on this nice sunny day, I'm going to spend uh, a good portion of it inside uh, building product. So uh, what I'm going to do is, since my afternoons are usually consumed by build, doing videos, I'm going to incorporate today's video uh, right along with my workload. Uh, so this afternoon, instead of doing a video, I'm going to put on a short sleeve or a sleeveless shirt and a pair of uh, convertible pants with legs off and sandals, and I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon riding my recumbent trike up and down the road in the sun and catch a little suntan maybe. So let's go out in the shop, and uh, I'll show you what's involved in just one just one operation, which will easily cover an entire video. I'm just going to show you how to fit the bottom up to uh, go into a poison pot. I'm just going to uh, go through the entire process of putting the bottom in one poison pot. So let's go do that. Okay, this is my uh, <clears throat> basic poison pot body. I have already, uh, the day before, uh, turned out an aluminum ring and pressed it into the top here, as you can see. And then I've taken it over the lathe and cut the bottom out. And now, after I cut it out, the cutter leaves a ridge right here that's going to be uh, tough to press into. So I have to remove this ridge. Uh, and I just use a jackknife. And just since it's aluminum, it's, it's fairly easy to do. I have to go all the way around the bottom of this pot and remove this ridge. Now, this isn't something that you just bang out and walk on to the next step. You have to really take your time and check and make sure that you've got all of the ridge out of there the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely smooth with just a little bit of taper for a lead-in for the, for the bottom. And one little spot there that's a... There, I think that'll work. Okay. Now we got to go make a uh, poison pot base. So let's go do that. Uh, if you listen, I think you can hear the girls in the background manufacturing eggs. <laughs> okay, this is the die for the poison pot base that I made. And we simply place that... Come over here and get my scissors. Be right back. Place that on our pure aluminum and make a little mark because we want it a little bit oversized. And then we cut a blank off here. This is not real easy to cut, it's thick, but these are real good scissors. If you take your time, you can do it. Okay, now we go to the next step, forming it. Okay, because this die doesn't have a guide pin in the middle, <coughs> it doesn't have a guide pin in the middle because uh, <coughs> this bottom doesn't have a hole in the middle for a knob. Obviously, it's the bottom. It has to be solid. So there's no guide pin on this die. This die is basically just uh, has to be lined up perfectly when you do it with no guide pin. So uh, this takes a little bit of a little bit of work on my part, eyeballing this and getting it uh, just perfect, so that when it goes down, it won't pinch and ruin the the base. There's probably several ways I could build a guide system for this, but I've had very good success uh, doing it this way. So, next thing we do is we slide it into the press, and then we put a few tons of pressure on it, line everything up here. This is how you form the base. 
this is a 12 ton press and I use all 12 tons. There we go. Okay, now we'll release it. And we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, I'm going to try to look in my camera and see what you see so you can... Okay, there it is. And you can see how it's formed. Now the next thing we've got to do is put this into the pot and then we'll go through the trimming process. Okay, now I've applied the epoxy to this and mixing the epoxy and applying it is about a 10 minute job. Uh, I didn't put that in the video because I'd rather not have people see on my products I use and the techniques I use. Uh, it's kind of a company secret. Now here's the blank and we're going to get that started and put that down in place. Okay, now, now that that's in place, we need to trim it and that's the next Okay, this is kind of a three-step trim job. The first thing I do, and I'm trying to look in my camera here, and okay, I think you can see there is. First thing I do is I go around it and leave, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, whatever, to get that out of the way so it won't catch on the final trim, because the final trim is something where you kind of have to hold your breath while you're doing it, because it has to be absolutely perfect as the whole system will work. And believe me, this is something that I learned to do the hard way. Okay, that piece of copper is recycled there. That goes right back and melt it down, use it over. Again. I don't melt it down, but somebody does. Okay, now we do the final trim. Well, the final scissor trim. I'm trying to see, to make sure that you can see what I see, so I'm trying to get this in the camera here so you can... Okay, here we go. Take the scissors, and once I get them into the pot, I use the pot for the guide, and just hug it, and go around and trim it just as close as I can. Now, I want to say just as close as I can, because I can very easily uh, undercut this and spoil it very easily. So, it's something that's uh, taking me a, a while to develop the technique. I, I developed it when I was doing aluminum. Okay, and that's the second trim. But you can see here that there's a rib sticking out that we've got to get rid of. So now we'll go over to the lathe and take that off and polish it up. Okay, I have this jigged up. Now I'm going to try to zoom in as close as I can so you can actually see what I'm doing here, but uh, I don't know whether that's going to work. Or not. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ridge off right here and bring it right down flush with the rest of the can and round it to make it look like it, uh, as some of my friends is, at uh, Sylvania would have said, to make it look like it growed there. <laughs> That's kind of the main humor thing. But I need uh, one more tool I don't have with me, so let me go get that real quick. And, uh, hmm. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tap this edge in and make sure it's in as tight as it can be. Put a little more tailstock pressure on it. little more tailstock pressure again. There we go. Okay, now we're ready to start trimming. Then, 
now I think you can see, I don't know whether you can get a better look here or not, that this is right down smooth, uh, no protrusion. That'll fit into a squirrel cage quite nicely, no sharp edges. That looks nice. Now, uh, that pretty much ends uh, this part of the video for today on uh, installing a poison pot base. Just a really nice pot. Uh, I really like these pots. They are uh, very nice. When I get all done with them, they're, uh, I think, the best pot money can buy. I'm Kenny from Mini Bull Design. Get out and hike. Take a friend. Enjoy the great outdoors. And more important than anything, have a really great day. So that's how you put the bottom in a poison pot. So I'm Kenny from Mini Bull Design. Get out and hike. Take a friend. Enjoy the great outdoors. And more important than anything, have a really great day. Bye-bye.